What is up, YouTubers? Coffee Party back with you on today. We're going to be going over 10 things NBA 2K mobile players hate and how to fix them. So, we actually had 22 things on this list, but we are only going to be going over 12 things in this video. So, if you guys want to see a part two, definitely let me know down in the comments below. You can also drop suggestions in the comment section below if you do have any. But yeah, start off with the first thing that we do have on this list is the 500 car limit. If you don't know what the 500 car limit is, Basically, if you're about to play seasons, uh, if you're about to play at the head, if you're about to play generally anything on this game, uh, if, and you're over 500 cards, they don't allow you to play it, and they pop up on the screen, which what you're seeing on your screen right now, where they have the 500 card limit. If you've never seen it, it says like something like lower, go below the 500 card limit, or you're not gonna be able to play anything or something like that. Whatever it says, you gotta see it on the screen right now. But uh, yeah, that is generally an annoying thing. For one, I feel like. Uh, not this is not this is not a way they can fix it, but I feel like when they add things to the game like this, they should tell us why they added it because it's generally just an annoying thing, and I don't know why it's actually there. I feel like we they gave us like a reason why it's actually there, then it wouldn't be as annoying, and we like we could see like the reason in it, so we could understand why it's there instead of just like being annoyed at it. But uh, yeah, uh, so the way they could fix it is so in the last overtime event, they added these new pummel collectibles. So basically. What well, Pummel Collectible is basically just a training item. So you have this right here. So basically, uh, there's a Sapphire one. I think there's a, a Ruby one as well. There's a, there was a, well, there was a blue one and there was a red one. So I feel like what they can do is that they can actually let us use, uh, let us turn our players into Pummel Collectibles. So I could leave, I could like change all my bronze cards down here into Pummel Collectibles. Generally, any card that I want. So on every single card, what like, they can do is they can add like an option. Like change the pump up or convert to a pump up or something like that uh so you can they can allow us to change up our tramp our cards and maybe that will give us like how they can do is for one they got to do it change like uh so if i were to train up this card or change this card to a pump up clip they would say deanza russell a pump up clip or they could do it where it says like however many the value of the cards you trained up so you could be like five ruby pump up clip or however much it is and just convert it into public collectibles for your collection so you don't have to worry about that uh card limit but yeah that is the thing that i feel like they could add to uh generally like just like remove like a huge pet peeve from this game but yeah so second thing that we do have on this list is pack exclusive card basically what a pack exclusive card is in my opinion is a card you only get through uh buying packs or it costs like a whole bunch of levels to get so for example in this last thing this exact the card was pack exclusive the De'Aaron Fox card pack exclusive and the Demonic Bones card pack exclusive as well. Basically, I feel like the way they can fix this, as well as putting like the Diamond Foundation cards in there as well, is they can put these cards in head to head packs. So basically, head to head packs already have a very low chance of giving you diamonds in general. But I feel like they can uh, put them in head to head packs and actually give us a chance again if you're a free play player. So for the Foundation theme, you're able to pull the cards like throughout the whole year. So if I open like a whole bunch of head to head packs, obviously, honestly, I have a lower, you have a higher chance of pulling them right now. But I feel like that, that could be also something they could do. Like during like every single time the team goes up, like I have like I have there's this whole season basically until the uh diamond theme. The there was only one Russell Westbrook card in this entire game, and that card was pack exclusive. So I feel like what they could do, they could add like as the theme goes as uh it goes up, you have a chance of like pulling like the Ruby Russell Westbrook from head to head packs. Uh, if you're like still that low to be able to pull him from there but uh yeah i feel like they could put them in head to head as, as a very low chance so for foundation themes uh pack exclusive cards they last throughout like the whole year and then for the uh pack exclusive cards from the uh actual like themes that last like two weeks they can have them in there for just the two weeks obviously you have a very low chance of pulling them but still that could just inspire people to play head to head a lot more and generally i just like get people that like, have more time with the game because i feel like that's an important thing as far as like having a game but uh yeah that would be pretty dope to add to the game. Even if it's like a very low percentage chance, uh, that would be make head-to-head -head packs for one a lot more interesting. Because I don't really play head-to-head -head that much outside of like just using it to upgrade my gear or to try out new players. But uh, yeah, that, they very rarely do they release new players into this game that are like not back to it as well. So uh, yeah, that's something that I could play. They could add to the game, make the game more interesting. So yeah, that is the second thing that we do have on this list. So next thing that we do have on this list is OPAI cards. Personally, I feel like the way they could fix it is not really debuff the AI. The only thing that's really debuff is OP, like full court shots and stuff like that. The way they could fix it is letting you set defensive matches before the game. So, for example, if I was to go into like a fancy finals match or a any kind of offline match, I'm not sure how they would do it for head to head. That might take way too long for head to head, uh, depending on like what happens there. But what I feel like they could do is they could have like for one, if this team, for example, was to go up against this team right here, uh, 
So obviously there's like a mixture of like bad defenders on his team as well as good defenders on his team. It's of very bad defenders and really good defenders. So for example, I got have Ben Simmons still guard Stephen Curry because he's a really good offensive player and just keep Ben Simmons onto him. I got have the Kawhi Leonard instead of Lou Williams guarding the Kobe Bryant. I could have Kawhi Leonard guard Kobe Bryant instead. I could have Lou Williams guard deadlift shrimp because he's not that much of an offensive threat. I could have Hakeem Olajuwon guard Kevin Garnett because Kevin Garnett is a really OP offensive player. And I could have the Julius Randle because he's not that good defensively, only a three defense guard Robin Lopez because Robin Lopez is like, he's okay. He's not that much of an offensive threat compared to how much offensive threat the Kevin Garnett is. So I feel like that's something they could add to the game to just like make AI cards not that OP without like debuffing the AI about a lot. So obviously like Stephen Curry and Kyrie Irving are, are OP in real life. Even if like they're and if they debuff now, I feel like that would like, just make the game unrealistic. So I feel like that's something they could add to the game to uh just generally make the game uh more interesting as far as like setting defensive matches for the game and reducing the OPS of the AI card. But yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the fourth thing on this list. We'll call a screen. Five. He just legit fell. Taking his three. He better not make that. <laughs> this game is hilarious, bro. I swear. <laughs> oh my god. So the next thing that we do have on this list is four core buzzer beaters, and we have no late game situations. The reason why I did them at the same time, I feel like the way you will fix the no late game situation is the same way that you will fix the full core buzzer beater. So basically. Uh, full court buzzer beater basically a lot of players in this game have the ability to make full court shots uh, because the CPU just has an ability to make full court shots which doesn't really make sense at a very high rate which also doesn't really make sense but yeah that is a thing that does exist in the game the way I feel like they can fix it is by fixing the uh, lack of legging situation issue basically by legging situation I mean that you're not able to intentionally foul or you're not able to full court press them basically uh, if they're if legit if they're up by uh, two points and the clock is below 24 seconds, they can legit just dribble the ball out. But what they could do, what uh, 2K Mobile could do, is they could add intentionally fouls because you can reach as much as you want. You, I've legit reached like six seconds in a row and like still not gotten the reaching foul in the game just over like that. So what they could do, they can let you like somehow, I don't know what control will be to like just like manually, uh, what's the name, just like do an intentional foul. And then the other thing they could do is also a part of the late game situation is allow you to full court press so you're defending the inbound also so you're playing better defense on uh let's say those full court buzzer beaters so they don't make them as often i feel like that's a way they can fix it on their end if you guys want a tip to fix it on your end is that fight uh, what personally not what i feel like what i do is i usually bring my tallest player up the court well not my tallest player i usually have ben simmons as my starting point guard so it really helps a lot with these kind of situations is so i bring ben simmons up and then he's defending like the inbound uh pass so they can pass like either point guard or the point guard said you're usually saying like in like the middle of them because if you stand like directly in front of them then that player will move and then uh he'll move away from the other player so because they usually have their point guard and their shooting guard there to uh, collect the ball so basically what i do to defend late game situations like that is for one for full court buzzer beaters i just uh press up on them as like i don't press up on them to where i'm standing in front of them like i just i'm trying to get that late game steal I'm pressing up on them to like in between those two players because they're gonna pass it in. They usually have two players down there. They have their point guard and the shooting guard that's about to collect the ball. So I usually have my uh, point guard, which is usually Ben Simmons, which helps a lot in situations like this. I usually have him in between those two players. So if they throw it in there to the shooting guard, which they most likely won't, uh, then uh, my point guard can just rotate over and like just like get as good as I possibly could up on their shooting guard. Or if they throw it into their point guard, then uh, I can just like hold defense and then just like just jump and try to block them so th also they're getting contested on their shooting guard if you stand in front of them uh they'll just move out the way so what i've noticed is that if i like, if i use like my ben simmons like defense Stephen curry and like they have harden right there they'll just throw it to harden but Stephen curry will also be moving away because i set in front of them obviously they don't want to throw that inbound steal and obviously they're running out of time so they got throwing into somebody so they throw it into their shooting guard so that's basically what I do for full court presses. I just try to stay in between them and then try to get as good contests as I possibly could. And then for late game situations like uh, reaching fouls, obviously there's no way to fix intentional fouls. If you're actually down the game, there's not really anything you can actually do that I found. If you guys know anything you can do, let me know down in the comment section below. But all you can do from what I know is just reach. And then, but if you're uh, if you're up by three, what you can do is you can bring your big and out of the paint. Well, not bring your big, bring a non-shooter out of the paint and then uh, just having them defend the ball handler now. So, 
and then the what what most likely will happen that they'll throw it to the player that your uh, defender just came off of, and they'll get like a wobble layup or something like that, and then you have control of the ball with like uh, very little time left, and then you can just all you have to do at that point just end on the ball to the right person, and just make sure they don't get a steal. But yeah, that is what I mean by uh, leg and shoot situations and stuff like that. They can also have timeouts. So you can uh, bring the ball up to half court, which would be pretty dope. They should only give you like one timeout per quarter, though, because that is would be pretty annoying if you were just spamming timeouts like that. But yeah, that is what I feel like they can do to fix legging situation as well as a fix that I have. But yeah, I feel like it's something they need to really fix, it, particularly with, because of how often their players make full court plays. But yeah, that is the third and fourth thing that we do have on this list. So the next thing that we do have on this list is also a combination of two of them because there's a, basically the same fix for both of them is. They make you jump when they do pump fakes, and then your player sometimes just randomly reach. So basically, the problem with both of those, for one, when they wrench randomly reach, which is basically the same issue for both of them, is your player is out of the position. So if you randomly reach, and then their, their player, particularly if you reach, they usually reach with their like their right hand, and their player, the players in this game are usually like right hand, so they just go right around them. Literally, like they go right, and then they go like around them. So and that they that's basically gives them a wild lane to the paint. And the same thing for pump fakes, obviously. If your player is just randomly jumping because their player does a pump fake or something, then also your players are out of position the same way. They, they just have like a wild and lane to the paint because your player just randomly decided to jump for no reason. So I feel like something, like, there's not really a fix that I can do for either of those. Uh, all they can do is like, fix it on their end. But yeah, that is the next thing that we do have on this list for number six and number seven. All right, so for number eight that we do have on this list is level four vertical jump. Personally, Level 4 vertical jump is the most difficult drill in this game. Between that and bench press, and bench press, usually if you do it enough times, you might complete it, but then again, you might not. But the problem with level 4 vertical jump is it's not really a problem right now, but later on in the season, they do have, they've done this for like the past two seasons, so they're, they're literally two for two on it. So they, they later on in the season, they're going to make you have to complete a vertical jump drill for uh, the uh, final, what's the name, whatever it is. So you have to complete a vertical jump drill to be able to get like better players for the start of season four if they do actually have a season four but yeah that is one of the things they do have with this for right now all you can really do to fix it is for one just train to get better at vertical jumps it's not really personally it's not really something i feel like i've gotten better at at all this season but uh what you could do is also if you need to get uh just the drills and so if you're just trying to complete the drill thing so usually it says complete uh four drills with the b grade or higher what you can do is if you have like level four vertical jump back there at the uh level four drill you're gonna just complete the level one two or three drill instead and just replay it because that will still count as that checklist reward so you can still get your uh coins for the day but yeah that is the uh eighth thing that we do have on this list i don't as i say i don't really know how they can really fix it on there they just i guess they can make it to where you don't have to get perfect for every single one that is what you need to do which is why it's so difficult because there's a bar moving up really fast and then you have to click it exactly at the right time to be able to uh, do that drill but yeah that is the eighth thing that we do have on this list all right, so next thing we do have on this list is the ref screens. Nope, that's the command in there. Let's make the smart decision. Can you get up? The ref literally got in the way, so I couldn't throw it to the air in the corner. That is so cheesy. Oh, my God. What the heck was that? Yo, these refs are get cheated, man. They need to stop doing that. So, basically, what the ref screens are is basically the refs are just, like, in the way every single time. So, if you run into a ref, it's basically the same impact as you running into a screen. And obviously, if their player gets wide open, if, particularly if you're on defense, if their player gets wide open, that's literally a wild open shot for them. And then you just have to live with, uh, because a ref was in your way, you just gave up a wild open shot. And the same thing happens on offense as well. So if your player the same thing, if they're running golf ball and they run into a ref, then that's basically it for the possession of, as far as like them like trying to run that play, because the, the defender is like right next to them at that point. But yeah, what I feel like they could do to remove the ref screens is uh, just remove the rest from the game. Uh, obviously the refs aren't really there they don't actually do it they're really just there for a visual purpose and to set op screen because also it's really op because they usually what players do they run from the right side of the court to the left side of the court while your players are defending. you guys are going to see like clips of this as well as some of the other things that we do mention on this list of them just like running it into like the refs so they're that the ref is literally like an off ball screener and then that plays the wild man shot so yeah uh the, all they can do just remove refs from the game they don't actually serve any purpose they're just there for visually it's like uh enhance the uh i guess the immersiveness of this game but honestly if refs are setting screens that does not expect the immersion of this game refs do not set screens in real life i'm pretty sure that's a violation or something something like that but yeah that is the ninth thing i do have on this also they can just make players be able to walk through the rest it'll it's gonna will kind of look weird but it is also an option but yeah that is the ninth thing that we do have on this list 
So a thing that we do have with this list is similar to the ref screen thing, which is something that we can't really fix on our end, that they would have to like just mainly do it on there and figure out what the problem is, because it's been here for a very long time. But yeah, that thing is at the out of bounds glitch. There was a meme going around with that uh, Kawhi Leonard shot to where he was fading, uh, and then he he ends up being out of bounds while he's like watching the, the ball going, like the all ball bounced around a whole bunch of times, and then there was like a meme, of, like a 2K Mo meme. So I find that the best 2K Mo meme of all time, just the out of bounds glitch being called on that. So obviously that shot would not count at that point, but I don't have to explain the meme to you. You guys have seen the out of bounds glitch. It usually happens uh, when your player is driving in. It also makes driving in less OP since there's no shooting fouls in this game. But it usually happens when your player is driving in and then the out of bounds glitch just happens because your player, usually your player is like staying out of bounds and that causes an out of bounds glitch. It's really hard to determine what causes an out of bounds glitch as well because I've gotten it on shooting sometimes. When my player is just like normally just shooting like normally. So I don't really know how they uh, fix it. They just got to figure out what the problem is and just fix it on their own and Hopefully, that's, this is something that's fixed soon because it's been in the game for quite a long time. It's been here since it, at the very least season two. I don't, I didn't really play season one that much, so I didn't really notice the out-of-bounds glitch. But yeah, that is the 10th thing that we do have on this list. All right, so the next thing that we do have on this list is the no post button. For some reason, every single player in this game has a post-scoring stat, but there is no actual post up button in this game. The only way you can post up is by walking into a player and hoping that they turn their back to them and start to post them up. Uh, usually a lot of times that does not happen and that will turn to what happens a lot is a uh, What's the name a bump steal because obviously walking into them and they're just their body is like just in contact with the ball So that will lead to a bump steal and then you turn the ball over because you tried to do a post up that should generally already be in the game Especially if every single player in the game has a post scoring stat uh, I feel like we just generally need a post button. I feel like Dirk and Whiskey for example is not that good of a power forward in the game because there is no post up button he would be a lot better in this game if there was a post the button. Same thing with players like, uh, what's the name, Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan, for me, is really just, uh, just a defender in this game and a spot-up mid-range shooter. That's really all the use he had. Also, he's a pretty good rebounder as well. But yeah, players in general, uh, you need to be able to post up. Because also, if your players, you have to be able to punish the CPU for switching onto a uh, bigger player. So for example, if I call for a screen, like Sean Kemp is like, and Stephen Curry is the defender, and I have Sean Kemp and... Basically, he uh, gets in a position where Stephen Curry is defending him, and he's trying to, like, I can, like, throw it to Sean Kim, and he's trying to post up Stephen Curry. I can't post him up, because if I try to walk into him, uh, he'll probably get a, uh, what's the name, the steal, and then if I try to put it up right in his face, because usually what happens in the game, we try to put it up right in their face, they usually do, like, some cheesy animation, especially if they're a small player, and you can't really post him up like that either. That's also another turnover. They got to remove that as well, the shooting house, and they just, like, don't call them. But, yeah, that is... Uh, the way they can fix the poster button, no poster button, just add a poster button. I don't really know where it would be on the screen. Maybe they get to add also like a customizable like UI so you can like uh, ch change where like you're, you want your controls to be. But yeah, that is the next thing that we do have on this list. All right, so the, for the last thing we do have on this list is the pop-up pack, particularly actually you're buying the pop-up pack. So every single time you get in the game, and also when it turns like 11 o'clock, I think when it turns to 11 o'clock, I think it's when it turns to 12 o'clock. That pop-up pack will pop up on your screen regardless of what's going on. If you if you go to like the home screen, as you see that we're, that we're on right now, uh, that pop-up pack will pop up on your screen and there's really nothing you can do about it. Uh, what I feel like they should do to remove it is for one, uh, give you the option, like putting like your options to where you can turn off the uh, pop-up pack every single time. Also, if you do actually buy, I recommend hitting up 2K support because they will refund you your coins. Cause that happened to me a couple of times this season and I've just like, I emailed them and they've refunded me my coins, but they should just remove the pop-up pack in general because I don't really want to have to email 2K support or something that they're legit putting in my way every single time. But yeah, that is one way they can fix it. Also, they got to have like, every single time you get into the game, you can pop up your news, they can pop up this bulletin thing right here. Obviously, these things right here show you what packs are in the store. So every single time you open the game, they can just show you the news uh, bulletin thing right here and then say they'll show you that, that uh, same pop-up pack that they show you on your screen every single time. And then you can just do, click it from here and you can go to the store. So, for example, I click go to the Spurs pack right here. They're going to take him to the Spurs pack in the store or they're going to take him to this limited screen right here. So, I fight. Like that is something that they need to fix in the game. Uh, NBA Gamer talked about it. A lot of people have an issue with it. I don't want to have to email 2K support every single time I accidentally buy a pop up pack because they put it on my screen every single time. Or if I'm trying to play it to head and I click on it, I'm, all of a sudden 2,500 coins is going out the window. But yeah, that is the last thing that we do have on this list. As I said, if you guys do want to see a part two, let me know down in the comment section below. And yeah, if you need to drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new, and peace out.